someone brought electric and i'm talking about the pokemon not the type and it also did decently well at japan nationals because it won two games which meant it qualified for the world championship let's see how this team performs this team features electric and psy spam under trick room electric can outspeed arm rouge and provide an acid spray combination for very powerful knockouts the Iron Forms allows pressure against Dragonite, Chiyu, and Chi and Pao through the Focus Ash, while Room Service Tusk can outspeed many threats in Trick Room. Finally, the Flutter Main to round out the team. Goal of the team is to mainly set up and sweep under Trick Room. If you would like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they will be linked in the description. Ting Lu Torkoal Glade Flutter Main Gastrodon Talonflame. Huh. <laughs> definitely some unique picks. I'll definitely say that much. I, okay. There's a Talon Flame, which makes this a little bit weird. There is the Gallade, which is actually kind of threatening to my team. It's not easy to deal with. Hmm. I think my combo is probably going to be Flutter Main for sure. I like Flutter Main a lot. Flutter Main plus. Flutter main entity isn't a bad option. Flutter main plus a lot. I don't know, because I don't really like Iron Forms too much. It can help out against the, the it can help out because it can dish out some damage. Pain missile could do an okay amount to the delay if it's a frail one, but if it's a bulky one, probably not the best idea. A uh, flutter main rock blast is nice, but otherwise, like I didn't talent flame, I guess, but I don't know. I don't think it's like the best option. I kind of want to try out the electric plus the flutter main. And you might be thinking why I'm going for this. It's because I have eerie impulse. So eerie impulse, I could definitely see myself clicking a bunch in this matchup. And then I think have in end game armor genity. Because I think the problem is start armor genity isn't exactly that great against the team because they're probably going to utilize things like their Ting Lu and uh the Gallade again it's not exactly like Gallade's a problem pokemon for armor entity it's just the fact that it does a lot of damage right away and i'm not a big fan of that so what i'm going to try to do is like force a tear immediately if especially if it's a response tear like on ting lu it would be really great because then i'd be able to go for like expanding forces pretty easily against my post team because it's the only dark type so we're gonna see ting lu gastrodon which is pretty ideal actually okay as I do lead my Flutter Main plus Electric. And yeah, this is not a bad situation. I'm actually going to go for a Protect with my Flutter Main turn one. And I'm actually going to go for an Acid Spray into the Tinglu. Uh, the reason I'm going to go for this is because I don't think they're going to respect the Electric as a threat. They're probably going to be like, oh, the Flutter Main's super offensive, threatening, heavy damage. So that's what I imagine they're going to target. They also really can't do that much to the Electric. The worst they could do is like, what, yawn the Electric and also go for a... I don't know, the ruination, I suppose. But granted, it's not like Electric's going to win me the game by doing damage. It's just supposed to be a setup tool for my other Pokemon to dish out a lot. We're actually going to force that tear immediately. So uh, we are setting up for that Arm Rouge Entity combo really nicely here. We're going to see the Terra come out. It is going to be the Terra Ground, actually. So I guess just to be immune to the into the Moonblast or like taking super effective damage, but I'll take it. We'll protect here. What are they going for? Double up in the Flutter Main? Gastron going to protect is super ideal. This might be Earthquake, which is great for me because I get an Acid Spray off and I do have Levitate. Yeah, they went for it. <laughs> I don't think they know. That the Maybe they don't know Electric has uh, Levitate, but or it's probably like one of their best moves to hit, but that's okay. This is really ideal here because I am able to get an Acid Spray off into the uh, Tinglu, which is really nice here. And it's interesting to note that the Tinglu was faster than my... Well, actually, no. Electric's really slow. So that's not too much of a surprise here. I'm just going to fire off a Moonblast into the Tinglu. Get as much damage as I possibly can. And I'm going to go for an Eerie Impulse, I think, into the Gastron. Or should I just Acid Spray here? Setting up... I think, actually, Acid Spray is not a bad play. Yeah, I don't mind Acid Spraying. Do they have a Punish tool? No, they don't. Okay, yeah. I'm fine with Acid Spraying here. The Gastron. Setting up for Armorage later. Moonblast is going to come out. A good damage to Tinglu, but it's a salt vest for sure. Zombie Tantrum going to come out into my Flutter Main. Again, Flutter Main was more of an opener just to try to help out against these. So, yeah, I do have that Focus Sash. Let's see. Did they not target into the Flutter Main with a double up here? I'd imagine they do. They went for Yawn, actually, which is fine because I plan to switch out Electric the following turn. So, 
Uh, this is not that bad. I am able to get the acid spray off into the Gastrodon. And yeah, now this is a pretty okay situation. Gonna be the leftovers on the Gastrodon, okay. So I would like to probably go out into Indity. And they're not going to protect EQ again. That's for sure. I'm just going to protect and I'm going to swap out into Indity because I can go for Helping Hand Moonblast a falling turn and threaten a lot of damage. So I don't really mind this. Terra is probably just going to be in the Armor Rouge and Armor Rouge is a completely fine Terra in this matchup. So I'm completely okay with that. We've already utilized again their Terra. Their expanding force switches are really weak. The only problem I think is if the Glade has Wide Guard. But I feel like if the Glade had Wide Guard, we would have probably seen it lead. But we'll, we'll find out. I don't think this is a bad situation at all. Also, Wide Guard on Glade is pretty rare now, I think, of days. We're going to bring out our in Entity because we don't want to get Yawned here. Psychic C doesn't seem too important in this matchup, so it should be alright. Utilize it even if we're circling any Yawn spams, which I think is okay here. Again, we're trying to set up for our Armor Rouge expanding for a situation. Gonna protect our Fluttermane because Fluttermane can still threaten the knockout afterward. We're gonna see a throat chop into Indity. Good play on their part. Okay. That was a lot of damage, actually. They go for Muddy Water. Ooh, alright, alright, alright. Uh, is that picking up a knock on an Indity? It is not. Okay. So now I can actually threaten. It's actually kind of annoying that they throw chop red me there. Maybe I had to have Electric take a sleep there. Which isn't super ideal either, but. We can go for a Helping Hand Moonblast. We can knock out the Tinglu, I suppose. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's get the knock on a Tinglu. Even if we lose both Pokemon here, I don't think it's that bad. Because Gastron's not like exerting much pressure either. So. Gastron actually protects, which is super ideal for me because I get the knock on Tinglu. I wish I got Shrikram up instead. That would have been amazing, but it might be an Earthquake Protect play, which we are able to catch. Tinglu does go down. Actually, it might have been better in that case if just knock out the Tinglu. It's super safe anyway. So we are able to get rid of the Tinglu. Fantastic. We can actually threaten maybe the Gastron knockout with Helping Hand Moonblast because the Gastron is at minus two. So yeah, I'm very happy about that trade. Very happy. Okay, let's see who would I bring out next. I'm not really too concerned about the Gastronon though, so if it's a threat to my armor, which I definitely will target it down instead of the Gastron. Because again, Gastron is not like super big. I could also save Indity and go out in Electric, and that's actually not a bad play here. But let's find out who they're actually bringing out here. They have. I can only really remember the Glade. <laughs> they have Talon. Did they have Talon Flame? Uh, Fluttermane coming in. Okay. I mean, coming in, which is fine. I'm actually a max speed one, so this is... And they use Terra already. I could actually go for Helping Hand Shadow Buff. I don't think this is... If this is Focus Ash. And... You know what? I mean, that's not a bad play here. That's not a bad play. I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for Helping Hand Shadow Ball. If they have Protect, that's kind of annoying, but... It's kind of a mind game regardless. I think I'm getting a free switch to Armor Rouge anyway. It's not like not... It's pretty good for me, so... Like, if I lose both Pokemon here to either Muddy Water or Dazzling Gleam. So, I think this is okay regardless. Let's go for Helping Hand Shadow Ball. Because if we can get the Flutter Main, that's pretty nice. Because, again, the Gastron's locked in at, like, minus two special defense. That means Expanding Force easily picks up the Knockout. And then all I have to do is, like, have a 2v1. And hopefully, my Pokemon should be able to beat theirs. Helping Hand will come out. Let's see. The Flutter Main can Terra. Okay, nice. We do get the Helping Hand Shadow Ball off. Into the Flutter Main. Are you focused, Ash, on the Flutter Main? You are not. So we are able to eliminate the Flutter Main. Very good. Very good. Very good. That's really solid. Okay. And Muddy Water. Pick up a double knockout. Ah, uh, they missed. Who did they miss? They missed the Flutter Main, which... I mean, I'm going to take it, of course. But <laughs> I don't think it was necessary. Actually, it was the last. A little bit concerned about who the last is. We're bringing our Arm Rooch. Talon Flame. Okay. I mean, the Talon Flame can't hit my Armorage or my or Fluttermane if it doesn't have an attacking move that isn't a flying move. I, I just go for a Moonblast into the Gastron and I just click Expanding Force. I have to Terra? I mean, what's the worst case? The worst case is if they... Tailwind, Earth Power, Crit? No, I don't think that knocks out Armorage. I think it's Muddy Water... Accuracy drop, but I can't really play around that. So I'm just going to Moonblast and Expanding Force. They go for a double protect. I'm assuming they're just stalling out the Psychic Terrain at this point. Oh, no. 
Uh, they're hoping to do something with the Gastrodon into my Armorage, but we get a Moonblast. Special attack drop, but Armor should be faster. Yeah, than Gastrodon. Gastrodon's really slow. Even over min speed Armorage, we're able to get Expanding Force off into the Gastrodon, and Gastrodon goes down, and Talonflame is all alone. We don't have to tear, and Electric actually beats the Talonflame, so um, <laughs> really nice there. We're able to seal this up right here with the Shadow Ball plus the Expanding Force. Like, even if, for instance, Muddy Water connects with the Flutter Main, I'm pretty sure that we just seal up the end game, uh, assuming no like really unlucky situations happen with uh, the Gastrodon and Muddy Water or Power Crits. It, I might actually risk the Terra Grass. It might have been better to, but I felt like I was in a really safe position otherwise. Electric was just really hard for them to actually handle. So yeah, it actually did really well for the opener. The asset space allowed me to set up and it's kind of weird. It wasn't in Trick Room, but they were still really slow. So my armor was actually just able to outspeed their Gastrodon and Taint Lou, we actually ended up being able to handle a lot easier than I expected. Orf Worm, Dragonite, Ting Lu, Fluttermain, Chien Pao, and Gyarados. I actually don't know what the Orphan matchup is with this team. Psy Spam is not bad here. We do have a Tusk. Tusk is pretty good here. I think I'll probably lead the Tusk. Uh, is it faster than Orf Worm? I actually don't know. I don't think it is. Uh, that could be a little bit concerning. So dealing with the Ting Lu is going to be pretty frustrating. Uh, they do have the Xi'an Pao with Ice Spinner. That's also a concern. Yeah, this is going to be a really tricky matchup, I think. Like, overall, I don't really like how we handle this. But we have tools. We do have tools. I think it's probably... There's no size spam. I don't really need Expanding Force in this matchup. I think it's definitely Armor. I need Trick Room. Great Tusk I want to bring to pressure the Ting Lu and the Orphorum. And then in the back. Kind of want to bring Electric because it helps out against the Dragonite a bit. We have Acid Spray pressure as well to uh, deal with Multiscale and the Dragonite also thing. And then us Pokemon is just, I don't know if it's Entity. I think it's probably Iron Forns realistically. I'm going to try Iron Forns here. No Entity is really strange, but... I want to experiment with it because my logic is that Iron Force does really well against their team. Uh, being able to Rock Blast consistently through their team. The only thing is the Orphorm is actually threatening, but we have our Armor Rouge. If I can get rid of the Orphorm with our Armor Rouge or our Tusk in the early game, then I feel pretty solid. The only problem is I have no idea if they're actually going to lead the Orphorm mode or if they're going to go with like a more offensive mode here, which actually could be really bad if they go like Shampoo Dragonite, uh, but we'll see. Uh, Orphorm Shien Pao is a very interesting one, which I'll take. Okay. So I lead the Armorage plus the... Great Tusk. Is it Orphorm Natural Speed? I'm pretty sure it's faster than Tusk. As faster than Tusk, we have problems. So I feel like my best play is actually to set up my Trick Room and go for a Rock Slide. Because I think this is probably just Shut Tail. I'm just going to go for rocks. I'm pretty sure that Orphorm, now that I think about it, I think since I'm 82 speed, I'm pretty sure Orphorm is a bit faster, if I'm not mistaken. Like, if it's, it's slightly, slightly. And also, I don't have to target Dragonite now. Like, the Rock Slide's not a bad play. Ooh, we see the Shan Pao switch out, actually. Okay. Uh, into the Gyarados, which, uh, this is not that bad for me. I do get Rock Slides off, and pretty decent damage in the Gyarados and whatever is coming in for the Orphworm Shuttail. We're going to see a Terra Fire immediately, which, man, if I brought the Entity now, Expanding Force would be really nice to have and that Psychic Terrain would be beneficial, but it's going to be that Terra Fire on the Orphworm so they could set up. But the thing is, now Dragonite can't Terra, which makes it a lot easier to handle, actually. So let's see. Iron Defense immediately, which... Yeah, it's actually funny. It is fat. The Orphorm is faster, which is completely okay. We do get a Rock Slide off. That's some okay damage. Uh, and Trick Room is set up. Okay. I mean, this is not that bad of a situation at all. Uh, the Gyarados actually gets handled by my Electric. I did use my Room Service, but uh, Room Service isn't that important. I do want to say my Tusk, actually. I think my best play... Body press is the thing that's doing a lot of damage plus waterfall. I wonder how 
here's the thing their play loses to me trick room me which i did and then going out into entity but i don't have my entity because <laughs> i was not expecting them to go for the orphan commitment here because i was not expecting it to do that well here all right i think my play is just to spanning force the orphan and maybe just fire off some rock slides because we can get flinch chances as well as like yeah like i don't see a reason not to we see the gyarados actually retreat which is fine into the Xi'an Pao. Ping Lu, okay. So, all right. I mean, that's all right by me. I'm still getting a huge amount of damage to the Orphan with the Rock Slide plus the Expanding Force. The Body Press is not doing too much to my team right now. I have a very physically defensive Tusk and the Armor has good natural physical defense plus resist. Yeah, as you can see, we do so much damage to that uh, Orphan right there. Gonna be able to heal with Citrus Berry, but it's not able to shed tail. And now... Yeah, pretty decent spot. The Tang Lu on these teams is also really fast. They iron defense again, which is super greedy. And this is definitely a Terra Grass situation, so I'm definitely going to Terra Grass here. I'm going to go for the Expanding Force into Orphirm and go for the... Once again, a Rock Slide, because I don't see a reason not to go for a Rock Slide. It catches Xi'an Pao on the Switch, too. Um, if they do want to switch on to Xi'an Pao. I don't need my Terra anymore because I actually think Electric will win this game, which is something you don't really normally say. I mean, I do have to watch out and be careful because the Ting Lu can still be a pretty big threat. But right now, they're not threatening any good damage right here. I'm threatening all their switches because Gyarados is not taking the Rock Slide plus Expanding Force super well. Chi and Pal could switch in, but that means you're going for Stomping Tantrum, not Earthquake. Or you're going for Throat Chop, I guess. You could go for Throat Chop here. Orphirm is going to retreat, which is smart because they do need the Orphirm. I'm surprised that they just ended up, yeah, again, letting it do nothing here. The Gyarados is going to come in, but Spanning Force into Rock Slide is still pretty good. I don't think the Gyarados was Citrus Bear, so depending on how much Expanding Force does, we might be able to pick up a Knockout. We're going to Terra Grass now, so we're, because we're not really afraid of the Orphirm Body Press. So Terra Grass. We also have Energy Ball to hit the Tinglu afterward, which is pretty nice. So let's see how much damage we're doing. Are we picking up the knock on Gyarados? And also, they have to fight through flinch chances with Rock Slide. So, yep, about 50% to the Gyarados after the two Rock Slides, even through the Intimidates. Expanding Force is going to come out. Probably barely missed the knockout, is my guess. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what the Tingling is going to go for. Going to be the Earthquake, yeah. Okay. As that's a Sold Vest, that didn't do anything to my. Arm merge. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, that really did not do that much damage. Uh, you gotta be careful about the couple of turns of trickering that I have, but... I mean, there are a few plays I could go for. I could go for an energy ball close combat at Ting Lu, but it's a solid vessel. So probably survives that pretty easily. I think I always energy ball the Gyarados. I don't think they go back in well i don't think they actually know they should never risk the xian pao here i'm gonna expanding force to gyarados that close combat or do i swap i actually want to swap to electric here the reason i want to save to electric here is i think you're either gonna go for earthquake once again or you're gonna sw uh you're just gonna mix it up and throw chop this time and then Acid Spray into Energy Ball is a combo I can 100% go for. We knock out the Gyarados, which is huge. So that's one. That's their Intimidator gone. So their Tusk answers are a lot weaker. And we're going to see what come out from the... Okay, Bulldoze. Which is an interesting play here. Because it doesn't change any numbers. Okay. Ah, uh, does Shin Pao knock out Armor Rouge with Sucker Punch? I don't think it does. I really don't think it does. I do want to respect the Xi'an Pao. Yeah, Xi'an Pao comes out. Do they protect or not is my question. That's my big question. I have no idea if they protect or not. How fast is my Iron Forns? Iron Forns isn't too fast, is it? Yeah, okay. So I have a little bit concerned because I have no idea whether... I don't think I should ever target the Tingle in this situation. But the protect from Xi'an Pao could be super obvious. But Ice Spinner is not exactly pretty either. I think my best play is probably just to Acid Spray Energy Ball to Ting Lu, though. Let's try it. I think Champ Pao can easily protect here. It's the last turn of Trick Room, so you can stall out. Yep, exactly. Okay. So I'm able to call that out. I'm able to get the best hit off into Ting Lu to put in range of like Earthquake or anything else, really, for my team. I'll gladly take that. 
So here comes an energy ball. Terra Grass. Does this make up a knockout actually in the Ting Lu? I don't think so with Assault Vest, but... Oh, it does. <laughs> oh, critical hit. I have no idea if that matters because the Ting Lu... The thing is, Ting Lu runs a lot of speed on this team, especially with Boldos. I imagine you have a lot of speed. So it's like a lot less special defense, even with the Assault Vest. And I know Helping Hand Energy Ball can... Terra Grass can knock out some Ting Lu's if they're not Assault Vest. Acid Spray is a little bit more powerful than that, but... Yeah, gladly take that. Okay. Or firm as the last. Uh, we're just going to focus down to Xi'an Pao. Which, yeah, that's always a play here. I'm going to go for the Trick Room again. And... I don't want to Thunderbolt the Orphorm. Because Orphorm is actually still a threat. Yeah, I'm going to Thunderbolt the Orphorm. Ice Banner is going to come out. But I don't have a switch, so armor goes down. I am still worried about the Orphorm. Critical hit does not matter. Okay. I could still very easily lose this endgame, which is why I'm playing super patient right here. I think I win the game if I knock out the Orphorm, and that's what I'm going for. Because uh, Iron Foreign should live one attack from the Xi'an Pao, and then I can uh, go for the target afterward. Also, Orphorm doesn't have Protect on this team usually, so Thunderbolt into the Orphorm. Yeah, it's a two-shot. Beautiful. We go into Tusk. Unfortunately, we're going to have to rely on an inaccurate move, which is my concern. But yeah, we're going to go for our post combat into the Orphworm. We're going to go for a Thunderbolt into Orphworm as well. We're going to go for Ice Spinner, which probably picks up the knockout because we take in the chip. Yeah. So Tusk goes down completely all right. And Orphworm plus your body pressure, not KO Electric. Because we have a lot of investment. Yeah. Even with the Sword of Ruin. Also, the Sword of Ruin is actually affecting... Air calc, so our firm goes down. Beautiful. Alright, so basically, I think we are able to seal this up with the iron treads. I'm not exactly too confident on how much Sacred Sword does, but I know we survived one. Also, they might not have Sacred Sword actually now that I think about it, because they usually run haze. And I don't think we saw Sacred Sword. I'm just gonna go for my pin missile. Because Pin Missile should KO the Xi'an Pao. We've already seen that they tear it before. I'm going to go for Thunderbolt and the Xi'an Pao as well. They have Sacred Sword. Sacred Sword crits the only way I lose this game. Or a miss. They do have Sacred Sword. Okay, so yeah. Pin Missile. That actually did a lot less than I thought. I was worried about Pin Missile and a Wall Charge recoil. Like if I Wall Charge the Xi'an Pao, they go for Ice Spinner and Electric. And then I took enough recoil to Sacred Sword to pick up the knockout. But uh, Iron Force actually took that a lot better. We're able to knock out the Xi'an Pao with the Pin Missile. Which is beautiful that we actually connected. Loaded dice guaranteed to hit four times. So able to seal it up. And Oh, geez. Orphworm. A little bit greedy. I was very surprised on how they played it. Uh, the Terra makes sense since they didn't bring Dragonite. But like, Iron Defense setup. Don't know. Against Psy Spam? Didn't seem like strongest option but it ended up working out really well for us if they got shed tail off into ting lu i think it would make the game a lot more interesting but yeah i don't think it would have been too bad because like the ting lu assault vest was really not threatening that much damage orphworm garchomp iron bundle chief fluttermane glamora this does not look fun for me uh, uh i mean i can't get trick room up against this team i suppose but Ah, uh, there are quite a few threats. The Orphworm setup, not exactly super pretty to deal with. Uh, this is definitely going to be one complicated game. I think it's definitely the side spam mode. And then I think it's room service great. Tusk is really good with the electric in the back, I suppose. It's just some really weird concepts here because they have the offensive Fluttermane Chiyu Iron Bundle. They have the... Uh, the mortal spin option to weaken my team with the glamour which is actually going to be a little bit frustrating to handle granted they don't get toxic spikes but mortal spin on my lead is not super great and they have the orphan that could shed tail and i have to let them get shed tail up because i'm slower than them iron bundle chiyu lead here now okay it's a ruin activate psychic surge get the psychic seed so i do live one dark pulse unless this is life orb chiyu uh, it's booster energy bundle, so that means... Okay, so booster energy bundle means they cannot... Okay. Booster basically means that the Chiyu can never outspeed the bundle, I'm pretty sure. Unless they have a really weird EV investment spread. I'm going to go for a Trick Room here, which is super safe. I'm going to go... I'm go for the Trick Room with Armor and follow me. Because if Indy goes down, we're in a perfect spot. 
Iron Bundle gonna protect. Interesting. I guess they're hoping. I mean, I don't I don't know what this does here. Snarl is like the only annoying move that could come out from the Chiyu here. It's just Dark Pulse, okay. Which I am able to survive. Life Orb on the Chiyu. Gonna be the Trick Room coming out. Alright. So expanding force, they don't have a swap other than the Chiyu that's out on the field. This looks like a side spam cleanup right now. Yeah. Or if Worm doesn't switch in well to expanding force either, so I'm just gonna. I could armor cannon here, I suppose. I guess. I don't think I really need it though. I will just go for the, I guess like if I'm taking the offensive initiative, let's just go for the armor cannon and follow me. It's not too bad because if they had snarled, I would have went for it. It looks like no swap here. So bundle's going to get sacked, which is beautiful for me. So I'll take the knockout into the bundle with armor cannon. Yeah, this does not look, <laughs> this does not look good for them. I'll definitely say that much. Uh, we are able to eliminate the bundle. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. All right, should you pick up the knockout here? Heat wave. Thank you for the flash fire. I'll gladly take that. But I like to use a KO to entity. I wanted Tusk out because <laughs> you're now able to sell my trick rooms a lot easier. Uh, Garchomp gonna come in. Okay. Uh, this might be Protect Earthquake. It's just a little bit. Yeah, again, I want I want the free switch. Just the awkward part. I guess it's okay here. I'm going to go for my expanding force into the guard shop. And, uh, you know, I can go for the helping hand energy ball, which is for expanding force, which is fine here. Yeah, I can go for the helping hand here. I think it's uh, affordable. If they protect guard shop and dark pulse, which is a pretty hard read to commit to, then I'll take it. If this is double protect, that's fine. I do the same play probably the next turn. Or I could just like go for, I guess, helping hands attack the Chiyu. The only problem is I have to figure out a way to knock out the Chiyu before Trick Room's over. Because like Chiyu after Trick Room's over is actually a huge threat to me. So let's see. That Chiyu is going to protect. Yep. Okay. Let's Garchomp protect as well. That'd be beautiful. Or, do, or does it not? Yeah, they do not, which is beautiful for me. Okay. So I am able to get the expanding force helping hand. The expanding force is able to eliminate the Garchomp. So Garchomp is gone. And now we can isolate the Chiyu, which is nice. I think we could set up to a position where Tusk should be able to win the game safely. Oh, we're going to see the swap to Fluttermane. Yep. Okay. I want to say life of expanding force naturally kills, but there's really no reason not to just go for a helping hand. I uh, know I go for psychic plus expanding force here. They go for psychic plus expanding force. They go for a double protect with Chiyu. It does the flame mania protect. Okay, it does have protect. Okay. This isn't the last turn of trick room though, so expanding force psychic should still be a safe play. Uh, they just don't want to take the knockouts because oh, what would have been nice is going for a double trick room. Okay. They're probably going to go for the double, right? Like, I think they have to go for the double here. They protect the Chiyu and double the Flutter main so they can, outside of Trick Room, go for a double knockout, and that'd be pretty bad. So I think I have to read whether Flutter main is going to go for the double or not, but I'm going to risk the double Trick Room here. Yeah, they go for Protect the Chiyu, which is pretty obvious. I feel like you have to go for the double with Flutter. Yeah, beautiful. They didn't get it, but I am okay with resetting my Trick Room turns. <laughs> So that is very, very good. <laughs> Glad I take that. I just want you to pick up the knockout on my freaking thing so I can bring in my tusk and obliterate you. That's I wanted the entity hit a while ago. Because <laughs> uh, I could have just went for expanding force terror and headlong rush, and I would have been super safe and not have to care about the guard job. Uh, we're going to go for the helping hand armor cannon into the flutter, I suppose. Again, if they pick up the knockout now, I think that's fine. Actually, they're going to protect flutter, right? I'm going to helping hand armor cannon, I guess, the uh, Chiyu. I'm going to get that damage into Chiyu. Might as well, because I don't want Terra Grass screwing me over in the late game. Okay, they don't actually protect at all, so... I mean, this still works out fine. Armor cannon. That... That's so strong. That's so strong. That's so absurdly strong. Okay. Knocks out to Chiyu. I'm surprised. Chiyu has really good spadef, but I guess that's life or armor cannon for you. Gonna be a dazzling gleam. Gonna finally pick up the knockout into both Pokemon, but electric. 
I should be able to win the game, I'm pretty sure, with um Electric plus the Great Tusk, even if they get triple protects. Because we know it's not li it's not life orb flutter, because if it's life orb Chiyu, we know it's not life orb on We know it's not choice specs because it went for protect. Thunderbolt Headlong Rush is always a safe play. Uh I guess if it's Pixie Plate and it gets some luck here, maybe? Or it gets luck. So you need triple protect. We're going to go for Thunderbolt into you and we're going to go for the Headlong Rush. And we should seal it up here, I think. And if they do get the triple protect, then I protect my Tusk. I go for the... Uh, do I go for Azus Spray or do I go for... I think I go for Eerie Impulse always. Yeah, I should go for Eerie Impulse. Because my Tusk is like, I think, max Spadef? <laughs> or it has like 252 Spadef investment. Eevees wise. Like, pretty sure. I might be wrong on that, but... We're going to go for Thunderbolt. We're going to go for Headlong Rush. Don't tell me they have a Terra that changes this matchup. I completely forgot that they sell Terra, but like... I, I Terra Grass is like the only common Terra... Okay, they just go for Terra Fairy. Which I'm surprised because I don't think they live this double up. <laughs> this is a headlong rush into Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. I did a little bit less, but this is Max Attack Tusk. Yeah, it picks up the knockout. Yeah, okay. I was a little bit worried. I know the Thunderbolt wasn't going to be super strong, but I was expecting a little bit more from the uh, Thunderbolt at least. But I'm able to seal it up there. Get rid of that Flutter main and great. <laughs> I was really hoping for, you know, the early game to be probably like faster. Just cleaning up with room service toss next to armor and trick room, which was like a lot easier to handle. Would have been a lot safer too, but ended up uh, being a little bit more awkward than I expected. But did make the read based on how they were playing. Like they went for protects aggressively or like even went to Chiyu. Like... Which I guess kind of needed to in the face of the armor cannon actually KOing the Chi, which I was not expecting. But the way that they were playing is like they were setting up for the Dazzling Gleam Dark Pulse situation uh, after Trick was over. So go for the double Trick Room there, take the risk, and it worked out. <laughs> All right, let's go over to games. Game one, utilizing Acid Spray Electric. I was able to put my opponent's passive lead into an early advantage to set up an armor reach endgame. Game two was able to do a lot of damage in the beginning with my opponent's Terra and setup not benefiting them to create an opening for Iron Forns next to Electric to win. Game three, not how I expected the game to go, which put me in a worse spot, but was able to get a double Trick Room read and reset Trick Room to win. Okay, Electric is pretty sick as an idea. The Acid Spray combination, Eerie Impulse, and the Electric Terrain for like a Moongus, Special Attackers can also really do well against opposing Psy Spam too. But yeah, very, very fun team. It was just really cool to try out the fun stuff, making the little text on the Psy Spam mode of Indie Armor, and it ended up performing pretty well. If you do want to try out, the rental code is on the screen available. You can check out the details of the team in the creator down below the description. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more VGC content as always.